Good afternoon. <laughs> Welcome to all of you on this historic day. Uh, my name is Deborah De Hoyos. Uh, I'm a trustee, and I'm also a proud member of the Centennial Gold Class of 1975. <laughs> and while I had thought that would be my greatest honor as a Wellesley alumna, the greatest honor has been to be chair of the search committee that has just selected Paula Johnson to be the 14th president of Wellesley College. <laughs> Today is 99.9% .9 about Paula. But in this small segment, I have a chance to thank the search committee. 21 people and everyone who could make it today being on the stage. It was two students, two staff, three faculty, two senior staff, 10 trustees, and one former trustee. Of these 21 people, 13 of us were alumni. And we were absolutely committed to finding a terrific 14th president for Wellesley. We worked for eight months. I want to tell you how we kept busy for eight months so that you understand our process. Our first step was to think about and to gather the views of others as to what we hoped to find in our next president. The process included input from Wellesley's on-campus and off-campus communities. If you attended an on-campus session or if you logged onto the website, uh, the search website, and offered a suggestion, we thank you. We considered all of your views and suggestions, and we put them together over the summer into a description of the candidate that we were looking for for this position. Then we began the hard work of reviewing candidate resumes and letters from candidates who were presenting themselves for consideration. Our search consultants from the firm of Isaacs and Miller did a very effective job assembling a deep, highly talented pool. We had superb candidates, but as good as search consultants are, it is the position in the institution that draws the superb candidates, and we should all take institutional pride that Wellesley was such a draw. The search, absolutely. <laughs> the search committee reviewed candidates the Wellesley way. We did our homework. We did our best to do it with thoughtful consideration. We didn't delegate preliminary screening to our consultants, but we, re we reviewed and discussed all the resumes. And for those of us who do not live in an academic world, academic CVs can be shockingly extensive. <laughs> 50 pages is a short one. We held two rounds of interviews the final round being a half day with each finalist. And we were rigorous and exhaustive in checking references. We checked references of people the candidates worked with and for, and people who worked for them, and people who knew them in other capacities. At every phase, the search committee had vigorous, engaged discussions. Everybody had opinions and they were all carefully reasoned, and they certainly were not the same. And we had terrific discussions. They were reasoned, but they were also civil and very respectful. But as I said, there were no sheep on this committee. And so it is particularly noteworthy that we all agreed with enthusiasm and conviction that Paula Johnson was the right person to be Wellesley's 14th president. The Board of Trustees agreed with the search committee with equal enthusiasm and conviction. So that now I have the privilege of seating the podium to Laura Danielle Gates, Chair of the Board of Trustees, to tell you a bit about and to introduce Paula. Thank you. So, like all of you, when presented with a challenge, I set a goal and make a plan. Last April, when Kim announced that she would step down as president at the end of this academic year, 
our board was presented with one of the greatest challenges it faces. The goal was clear. I needed to stand, be standing here before you right about right now and presenting the new president who was fully able to lead us in achieving our highest aspirations for Wellesley. The parameters of the plan were also pretty clear because there's a proscribed way that Deborah's just described of finding a college president. And success is determined by a few things. One of them is, as Deborah said, the reputation of the institution. And as Deborah also said, we didn't have any problems on that score, and that's because of all of you, our great students, our great faculty, our great reputation, and all the wonderful things that happen at Wellesley. Uh, so we could put a big check mark next to that one. And so the next thing was ensuring that there was um, a really great process and that we had a high-performing team. And it's at this point that I did a really smart thing. <laughs> I appointed Deborah De Hoyos <laughs> to be the chair of this committee. And all of us here, all of this search committee, and all of you owe Deborah a big thank you. She's also told you that this was a selection made with great conviction and enthusiasm by both the search committees and the trustees. And now it's my privilege as the chair of the board and great pleasure to introduce to you our next president. Paula Adina Johnson will become the 14th president of Wellesley College on July 1st, 2016. We believe that Paula Johnson is the perfect person to lead Wellesley now. Since perfect is an overused word, I looked it up before I used it in this context. <laughs> Yoon? Okay. And this is the definition that I found. Having all the qualities you want in that kind of person, situation, etc. So now I will tell you why perfect is the perfect word choice. You probably already know the basic facts about Paula's education and experience, but just in case, she is a professor and faculty member at Harvard Medical School and at the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health. She is founder and executive director of the Connors Center for Women's Health and Gender Biology at Brigham and Women's Hospital. The Connors Center is an integrated model of education, research, and clinical care. She built the Division of Women's Health at the Brigham and at Harvard Medical School, another interdisciplinary initiative. She's been elected to the National Academy of Medicine and has received numerous honors and awards throughout her distinguished career. She attended Harvard and Radcliffe Colleges and received her MD and Master's in Public Health degrees from Harvard as well. But there is much much more to Paula's readiness to lead Wellesley. Her scholarship on the importance of sex in research and treatment of disease is creative. Every cell has a sex. Who knew? <laughs> the creation of the Connor Center, an interdisciplinary integrated approach to a set of issues which I suspect were not necessarily at the top of everybody's list at the time Paula created this center, was clearly innovative and courageous and required a certain amount of resilience and stick to or so I assume. She's a valued colleague across Harvard University and beyond, from faculty and deans to nurses who work with her to Wellesley alumna Vivian Pinn at the NIH to Drew Faust. She has a nuanced understanding of the commitment to and issues surrounding um, diversity, inclusion, and equity as they affect our entire community. And she has a very deep understanding of the issues of health and wellness, so important to our students and all of us. She's already working with others on these issues, 
and thinking about ways to increase our effectiveness. Paula Johnson is the perfect person to lead wealthily at this time in our history. We are steadfast in our mission to provide an excellent liberal arts education to women who will make a difference in the world in so many different ways. Paula has dedicated her distinguished career to improving not just the health, but the lives of women. She has not only applied her own deep intellectual capacity and medical training to these issues, but she has led others in creating and implementing innovative and collaborative approaches to addressing them. Paula will bring, now bring all these talents, her intelligence, courage, grace, and lifelong commitment to women, to Wellesley College, as we build on our success and continue to enhance our work, as we prepare our students to thrive in a rapidly changing and complex world, and as we strive and work with others to create more opportunities for all women everywhere. I am honored to present to you Paula Dina Johnson, the 14th president of Wellesley College. Thank you. Uh, wow. Um, I cannot tell you how overjoyed and in a way overwhelmed in the most positive of ways. Um, just overjoyed with the prospect of beginning my tenure as your 14th president. Um, Laura and Deborah to this amazing search committee, um, to the alumni, to the faculty, and to the staff, and the two amazing students, Shivani and Charlotte. <laughs> and to the board, I want to just thank you for this opportunity to lead Wellesley at this moment in time. And I want to also thank President Bottomley for her leadership um, and her continued leadership um, in which she's taken Wellesley over these past years. To you in the audience, the students, the faculty, the staff, and the alumni, I look forward to getting to know you, to hearing from you, from lear to learning from you, to learning with you, as we take Wellesley into the future. So thank you. This is such, I think, such an amazingly important moment in time for women and for women's leadership. Finally, women's leadership is being recognized as transforming health, education, and economies, the economy of families, cities, and whole countries. But we also know that gaps remain, and we also know that there is a growing inequity in our society, in our world, and women bear a disproportionate burden of that inequity. So here's the opportunity, but herein lies the need and this, in my opinion, is what makes Wellesley so relevant and so hopeful in terms of transforming the future. Thank you. We know that Wellesley brings its deep commitment to the liberal arts, to the exploration of ideas, and to critical thinking and to innovation. We know that Wellesley brings its commitment 
to diversity, inclusion, and equity, not just as mere goals, but as essential and central to a high quality liberal arts education. And we know that Wellesley brings its commitment and laser beam focus on the education and development of young women who will go into the world and make a difference. And I would actually go farther than just make a difference. Who do and will go into the world and transform it. So, Today, I am so thrilled to have my family here, my father and daughter. We had a little mishap there, a little late, but um, that's what happens in a busy family, uh, to be transparent. Uh, um, but you'll welcome them when they get here. <laughs> we will. Uh, but my husband, Dr. Robert Sands, who actually went to Wellesley for six months and enjoyed it thoroughly. <laughs> My son, Jonathan Sands, who is a junior at Harvard College. My father, as I said, Edward Johnson, who's on the way, came in from, from Brooklyn. Uh, and my daughter, who will be here shortly, my 15-year-old daughter, who is a freshman in high school and cannot wait to become part of the Wellesley community. I promised, <laughs> I promised her that I would, I promised her that I would bring her to eat with me in the dining halls. So just know this, we've got to get ready. Um, my mother-in-law, Phyllis Rosenthal Sands, is here with me. And Phyllis is a proud, proud Wellesley alumna, class of 1946. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that Phyllis has missed a reunion, and she will be back in June for her 70th. <laughs> And my sister-in-law, Beth Sands, is here. So I just want to end by saying that um, the one person who's not here with me uh, today, but who is here in my heart, is my mother, Grace Johnson. She passed away a few years ago. But she was a true force of nature. Um, she had a deep belief in educating her daughters and um, really dedicated her life to that. Um, she was a school secretary and had not had the privilege of going to college, but was deeply committed to independent thinking um, and to really developing one sense of self, voice, and agency. And she fulfilled her lifelong dream of obtaining a liberal arts education and graduated the year after I graduated from medical school. And yes, it was quite amazing. And um, you know, as I reflect on her incredible life, I always ask, what if? What if she had had access to a Wellesley education? And now I know, because I see the what if reflected in each and every one of you who are students here in this audience. Your what ifs are your hopes and dreams, not only for yourselves, but for the future of Wellesley College. And I look forward to learning about those hopes and dreams, hearing what your hopes are for Wellesley, how we move forward into the future, and I am here to go on that journey with you. Thank you.
So I do enjoy, uh, I will enjoy meeting all of you or as many of you as can stay downstairs. Thank you. So I hope, I do hope all of you will join us downstairs um, and have a chance to greet Paula personally. Thank you.